Hi everyone, it's Lou Collins. Welcome to the fourth episode of Mixed Media 10 Minute Techniques. Today we're going to be working on colour theory and in particular contrasting or complementary colours because I think this is essential for building your projects and making them really eye-catching. So if you're just joining us we have already covered three different techniques on our technique tags building up your knowledge of mixed media. So if you want to join the course as such it's completely free it's a series of videos you can go along to the playlist which I will link just up here and you can start from the very beginning and see an introduction video as well. So we're going to be looking at a colour wheel. These are easily accessible online for free so you can go and browse those and essentially with a colour wheel what we've got is the rainbow of colours in a particular order and it's always the same order and what they tend to say is colours that are near each other are not, they, they go together, they're harmonious and we might work within this sort of colour range so say for example we might take the orange yellow and this lime green and work with those or perhaps let's just move this round because this one's got a really cool sort of grid on it. So we might use the cool colours and go with blues and purples together in a project. I think everything works beautifully together and it does. But I am a firm believer of a pop of colour. How do you get that pop of colour correct? Now if you look at these images and they are not my images, I've taken these from Pinterest. Why are these so eye-catching? Why do we why are we drawn to these so much? And it's because each and every one of these is using complementary colours. Now, what complementary colours are are colours that are opposite each other in the colour wheel. And in general, we wouldn't usually use these together at all. So for example, we have got blue, green, and red, orange. When would you usually put these together? The same here, red, violet, or you could say, let's go purple and yellow. We wouldn't usually put those together. Now, usually these colours, if mixed together, will go brown with virtually all of the different instances here. So you don't want to mix them, but if you are layering them, you are going to get beautiful pops of colour that just work. Now, I would always suggest base your project on one main colour. Now, I'm going to do, actually do three tags today to try out some different combinations. And I suggest you do as many as you want to give yourself some different options and try out and see which colours you love best. So I've got two prepared, half prepared already. I'm going to do another one to show you how I ink these backgrounds too. So it's another technique for your crafting arsenal. But I'm also going to be adding a contrasting colour on top of each of these and show you how I choose those. So the background colour, the main colour, it may be one solid colour as I'm using here, purple or a teal blue, teal green, but you could also use a mix of colours. So for example, you could use yellows and oranges all in a base on a project. This would be around about three quarters, maybe even more of a proportion of your project all in these colours plus your neutrals. Neutrals don't count. And then when you come directly opposite, so let's go here, your contrasting or your complementary colour, the blue, violet, purple here, would be around about a quarter or less of your project. And that's what's really going to make it pop and not overwhelm it and not make the project look muddy or brown when looked at from a distance. So as I say, I've got two tags prepared already. I will prepare a third one so you can see how I do this. Now I will be going into much more detail about layering watered down inks in another video. So that's going to be another lesson as such in the series. So I'll do this quite quickly. I'm sticking with one colour for the base, just one ink. This is a water reactive ink. You could also use your ink sprays. We had a look in a previous video, that was video number one, at how to... Um, mix up your own sprays as well so you can go back and check that out if you haven't already. So onto a blending mat I'm just smooching pressing in some of my ink this doesn't have to be distress oxide it could be distress ink it could be any um, ink that is going to react with water that's going to water down and then I'm just going to press my watercolor cardstock tag into it. Now at this point I'm actually pressing all over trying to get as much of it soaked up as possible. Now you are going to get mucky fingers, look at this. I've been preparing a lot more than just my tags. I've got some coloured strips here to show you in a moment. That's what I've been doing before I started this video. I've got very mucky fingers. But I'm looking for an overall base colour. This can be almost solid at this point. And then I just mop up the excess quickly as much as I can to get some texture on there. So just pressing that in. 
and then once I'm happy that the majority of that is covered I'm going to come away from my blending mat because that is essentially plastic and that is just going to melt with the heat from the heat gun and I'm going to dry this off. Now while I'm drying this off um, it's worth mentioning the desk that I'm working on, the mat that I'm working on is, I get so many questions about this, it's actually a photography uh, backdrop. If you type in in your regular shopping websites um, food photography backdrop you get lots of options this one is double sided it's quite large so it kind of covers my workspace and the good thing is they're almost made of like a vinyl so they're wipe clean so that's one layer but as you can see that looks very different to this there's not as much texture so I go in with a second layer so not even wiping my mat here I'm just going to apply the same ink again lots of ink there so pressing it down and twisting as I do and giving this a light mist this time less water because this time I'm going to get darker colours and much more texture and I'm not looking to cover the area this time. All I'm looking for this time is those patterns going in as we press it into the droplets. Now I do this upside down so that I can't see what I'm doing. The reason for this is because if I could see where I was putting my ink I would try to control it far too much. Um, I would be thinking well that's a little bit uneven, I think I need a little bit more there. This way it's a really natural and organic look. So I've done that again and I'm going to dry this off. So let's look at our three tags. There's a little bit of warping going on there because of the water and the heat. But that's fine once they're um, in my tag book we won't really notice and I have also created some strips of cardstock here and it's probably worth you doing this as a separate project just to keep to help you choose colors if you're ever stuck so I have got all of my primary colors um, and just you know purple pink uh, red yellow orange green blue and a teal not in that order so I've done these these are with my distress oxides and I've used the same technique as I just showed you for the tags only because this is the one that I will use the most usually this is where my base color and pattern and texture will come from so I've done this on these so I've got a rough idea of how things are going to look okay so if I have a look at my teal to start with and let's take a look at our color wheel so with my teal, we have got green and blue to the side of it, as you can see at the top here. Okay, so if I take blue, it looks harmonious. It looks nice. It's going to work if you're looking for something that is, well, I say harmonious, just working together uh, and matching, and that's fine. The same with the green. The green does pop a lot more because there's actually some yellow in this green as well but if I was to use something like let's grab my ink pad and go with the mowed lawn green again it just kind of fades in there it's not going to be a pop of color so going by the color wheel we are looking at these three colors here so red orange or red orange okay so let's take a red and I can see that really stands out. That looks beautiful. Then let's try an orange again. Now I love that. Look how contrasting that is. That is going to work absolutely beautifully. Now bear in mind, usually on your projects, you're not just going to have the two colours. You're going to have variations of these colours. And as I said before, you'll probably have variations over three quarters of your project or more of the base colour. And then just small pops of the top color, the complementary color. So I'm going to choose an orange for the teal. I'm going to do the same with the purple. So with the purple, I'm looking at yellows and yellow greens. So pop a yellow on there, beautiful. Now just for contrast, look, the pink, which is very close by, it just doesn't work. So yellow is going to be my chosen color for that one. And lastly, with the pink, so let's see, pink I would say is probably between red and red violet, so we are looking at a green here. We've got green or we've got yellow green. Now as I say, I mixed a yellow green, there we go. They are all going to work beautifully. So for our tags, what we are going to do is mix the colours that we've chosen onto some small circles. Now I have die cut from watercolour cardstock for each tag, three small circles, you could do squares, you could do any shape you like, stars, um, you could hand cut shapes if you want to, um, but do a couple just so that you can layer them on and start to see what they would look like on a project to give you inspiration 
for the future. So with each of these, let's take our teal one first. I've got my three and I've chosen oranges. So I've got Rusty Hinge is a brown orange, is exactly, it's a rusty colour, but it still falls within the orange colour group. Then I've got a really bright orange as well. So what I'm going to do on these ones, rather than the dipping into the ink that we saw a little while ago, I'm actually going to swipe some quite solid ink onto these. So I'm going with the Rusty Hinge on one side and the Carved Pumpkin on the other. Now this again, mucky fingers, you could probably use tweezers if you don't like getting them quite so mucky. You can also swipe on the pad for the smaller ones. So lots of colour in there and then I'm just going to apply my water and allow those colours to just mix around by themselves and I'd probably let them air dry as well. So I've given those a dry off with what's left on my mat. I'm going to spritz a little bit more water just to make sure that there's no solid colour there. And I'm going to press into that orange ink. I'm just using my tweezers. This might not make such a difference because we've actually laid down quite solid ink already. But you're going to get a little more texture in a very similar way to how we just did the tags. So now I've got my orange circles that are completely complementary to my teal colour background. I'm just going to ink around the edges. Now this is something we'll cover later on, is building con contrast and shadows in this way. But I'm just going to ink around the edges of these circles for now to really help them pop and help me see how they would look on a project if I'm flicking through this later and looking for colour inspiration. So I'm going to lay them up in a group so that they don't take up too much of the area of the project because that's how they would be on a uh, project there would just kind of be a small amount there so that just works really nicely I'm going to adhere those down and I'm then going to do the other two tags as well in exactly the same way a few finishing touches to each tag will just be inking around the edge in the same black and adding a tiny bit of text for texture as well in both the foreground and the background so there's my three tags now with contrasting or complementary colours on as a colour scheme that I can use in the future and I know that they're just going to work and pop beautifully. You can of course make as many tags as you wish, try out all the colours on the colour wheel if you want to and see which ones you really like best and which ones you are drawn to. Now don't forget of course to join us on Facebook, there is a Facebook book group called Mixed Media Technique Taggers with Lou Collins. I will make sure that is linked in the description below and I'm also going to link the introduction video and the playlist which is also just here for this entire series so that you can go back and work through the videos one by one if you haven't come from there already. Thank you for joining me everybody, take care.